Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Bridget Baker. I'm Mike Van Force. And today we're going to be diving into the all too prevalent issue of homelessness. Houselessness, traditionally known as homelessness, is a common issue in America. Uh, with almost 600,000 Americans in 2020 experiencing it, according to Henry and colleagues, the to a Henry's and colleagues report. Despite many efforts, it persists, and we're here today to talk to you about the nature of this problem and how we can fight against it. Yeah, when it comes to lessening the impact of houselessness, there are two categories that we can focus on. Uh, let's first take a look at the ways that people end up houseless and the barriers keeping them from getting out of houselessness. Start off, uh, the causes of houselessness are multifaceted as found by Burreal and team in a 2018 study. Um, here an overlap was found between mental health and disability status, as well as substance abuse and job related problems, such as layoffs. Services related to these issues like mental health services, along with services that recognize how these issues so often intersect, could aid in prevention and assistance for the homeless. Yeah, another issue that often flies under the radar that prevents people from improving their situation is a lack of transportation. Uh, according to interviews with homeless individuals conducted by Bralier et al., they published in 2019, uh, insufficient resources in, sh in shelters and high prices of transportation ser uh, services contribute to the problem. So increasing accessibility to transportation could have a huge impact. Yeah, very true. Finally, um, one of our last sources of information on the barriers for homelessness um, improving is from Christian Abrams in 2004, who found that the theory of planned behavior could help explain a homeless person's ability to seek help. According to Franzoy and Oswald in 2021, the theory of planned behavior states that behavior is influenced by behavioral intention, which is influenced by three factors one's attitude toward the behavior, perceived subjective norms about the behavior, aka whether one thinks that others will approve of that behavior, and perceived behavioral control, aka how difficult the behavior seems for that person to carry out. So if they have a lot of issues in place that make that behavior really hard, that affects the perceived mm -hmm. behavioral, behavioral control. Um, Christian and Abrams investigated these three factors influence on behavior, um, specifically the behavior of attending a homelessness outreach program and found that based on studies in both London and New York, these factors were the main predictors of intention and behavior and accounted for between 61 and 78% of the variance in behavior. This all indicates that just working to improve attitude and subjective norms about seeking help as well as perceived behavioral control, maybe removing some of those barriers that make behavioral control seem lower um, can all play a major role in people seeking the help that they need. As you can see from the previous information about the multiple causes of homelessness, from Bereal et al. in 2018 and Bralier et al. in 2019, people do obviously often need help with homelessness issues um, that can really improve their situation. So the ability to seek help is very important here. Yeah, absolutely. Besides the factors directly related to houselessness, there are many negative misperceptions the houseless face on a daily basis, which can prevent support for the help they need. Um, a study published in 2017 by Jose Vasquez and his colleagues looked at houselessness through the lens of the actor-observer bias. Um, uh, that is the tendency to attribute one's own behavior to situational causes, but we attribute others' behavior to dispositional causes. So for example, we often assume that people are houseless due to their own personal shortcomings, instead of considering something like external, like disability status. Uh, the study did find evidence that the actor observer bias uh, with this, the, the individuals pretty much did not attribute houselessness to societal causes, but they instead tended to blame individuals to causes. Yeah, building on that, one of the especially extreme types of negative perceptions um, is stigma or a perceived negative characteristic that completely overwhelms your perception of a person. According to Francois and Oswald in 2021, um, Kim et al. in 2021 specifically investigated the nature of stigma about the homeless by conducting an extensive study of Twitter 
revealing that people often perceive the homeless in terms of stigmas like unhygienic, dehumanized, socially deviant, and threatening, among other stigmatized characteristics. Homeless is often used to mean inferior, and it's apparent that people often have very negative perceptions and stigmas about the homeless. These negative stigmas are often inaccurate and do little to encourage policies and approaches to help the homeless as they encourage just discrediting the homeless as people because that's just the nature of stigma. Um, two studies on stigma related to the homeless conducting in varying time periods, Phelan et al. in 1997 and Kim et al., which was just discussed in 2021, um, both found that the desire for social distance is common thanks to stigma, but as we'll find out next, decreasing that distance is crucial to altering perceptions for the better. Absolutely. One major way we can change how people view houseless individuals and address the overall issue of houselessness is through volunteer work and mere exposure effect. Um, that is basically, we tend to get a more positive attitude towards an object when we're exposed to it. As uh, a matter of fact, in 2011, Margaret Brown published her study showing that empathy towards the houseless is increased through volunteer work compared to indi individuals who only research the topic. Now, this, st this study also provided evidence that those who volunteered not only increased in empathy, but also decreased in their social dominance orientation. Now, with that, the social dominance orientation fits into social dominance theory, which posits having group-based hierarchies as part of human nature. And the degree in which people have a preference for social, uh, social hierarchy is called social dominance orientation. Absolutely, and that hierarchy's beliefs with social dominance can help um, people justify not interacting with and helping the homeless. So that's a huge factor. These results are also in line with the mere exposure effect, which refers to the idea that just being exposed to an object of attention more often makes your attitude toward it more positive. And this can happen really fast, according to Fear and Oswald in 2021. Um, and since volunteer work involves more exposure to the homeless and knowing the mere exposure effect, it makes sense that attitudes did become more positive. So volunteer work generally just appears to be a great strategy in particular, not only because it helps often underfunded organizations, even if perceptions don't change, but also because it does often improve attitudes and potentially the future willingness to help the homeless based on that decreased social dominance orientation and increased empathy. Okay, so now we're here with Michael Reinmiller, um, who has some experience with homeless populations around here in Nebraska and everything. Um, so to start off, um, Michael, do you wanna just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your experience? Oh boy, um, well, I started volunteering at um, Fresh Start Home. It's in Havelock. It's a women's shelter that houses up to 24 women at a time. And what's really cool about Fresh Start in particular is it's not just a homeless shelter. It's a, it's a long-term uh, facility. So you, if you're a homeless woman over the age of 19 without children, uh, you can be there from six months to a year to get back on your feet, to get your issues dealt with and a plan in place that is actually working. And uh, many people say, well, why women without kids? That sounds cruel. Uh, well, realistically, uh, many of the shelters say women with kids get first priority and then the women without kids just keep getting pushed to the back burner. So it was women without kids that are all of a sudden, um, uh, they're empowered to, uh, deal with the issues that are that are introducing homelessness to them and it's so cool watching uh watching them uh, they really struggle at first that you know when you, you first hear about them and the next thing you know they're they're getting their own apartment they got a car they got a job they they're cleaned up uh whatever issues they were dealt with are stories that they tell not living not living the story if that makes sense so i started doing that probably in around 20 13, 2012, somewhere in there. Then I got more involved. I got on the board. Um, I've been on the board. I think this is my fifth year uh, as a board of director. Um, since then, I've done a lot more volunteering. I do everything from Meals on Wheels to teammates to uh, I started the a Little Free Pantry in Lincoln about two, two and a half years ago now. There's now 41 Little Free Pantries throughout neighborhoods in Lincoln. 
um, it's just, there is such a need for struggling families and it, you know, don't realistically, every single person I know is one car accident away from, from experiencing homelessness. I mean, it takes one domino to fall at the right time at the right place. Um, I, I could be me in three months. I don't know. I hope not, but, um, so either that's how I got involved. I'm pretty passionate about it. In fact, tonight I'm cooking two big spiral cut hams for the ladies at Fresh Start. And then um, tomorrow I have off and we're going to, my truck is full of donations for the little free pantries and I'll drive around till they're all, till the truck is empty. So on, and then on the 26th of December, I'm having a stuff the truck event where we're asking for dry goods to go into the little free pantries. And I'm dressing up as Santa Claus and my son that's going to be turning four soon will be dressed up as a little green elf. So at least there's a cuteness factor. Um, so that, I mean, I, I, it's like every time I turn around, I'm doing one thing or another and it's, and I wish I had more, if I could just, you know, be related to a, a billionaire or something, I wouldn't have to work all the time and I would have more time to do what I'm passionate about. So I went on and on and I'm sure that I bored you to tears. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. Oh, all great information. It sounds like kind of jack of all trades with stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, whatever's needed at different times. It's, it's kind of funny um, in this, in this, I turn on the news and everyone hates this and hates that and protests here and everything from gender to, to, to race. I mean, everyone find, finds a million reasons to hate each other, but it's like, um, I'm really inspired by so many of these people that I get to meet that are doing such cool things to help out the community. And you never hear that side of the story. It's always riot here or fights over there and it's just yeah there's a lot of ugliness going on but there's a lot of really cool things going on as well and i wish that that got a little bit more light yeah for yeah. sure <clears throat> yeah. um fortunately the the cool things aren't as is uh marketable as agree the, the bad things. wouldn't it be uh, great if just breaking news one time on cnn local sixth grader gets a in math i mean just once that would be really nice <laughs> really really nice um so what got you interested in working with the houseless population oh boy um what got me started was um uh, the executive director monica zinke came to my church once and um and started uh talking about what they're doing and um it just kind of blew my mind like i'm only one person i can do a little bit you know, and you just, I don't know, she was very inspiring. Um, their main goal at Fresh Start is empowering women. And I'm like, as this, as a straight white male, things are just handed to me right and left. And I feel almost guilty about that. And it's like, I need to use what I'm lucky enough to be given and, and, and make things better. I need to advocate for, for folks that that just need the advocation, you know, I, I don't know if that's the right word, but you know, I think I'm trying to, I think I'm saying what I mean. <laughs> well, that's fine. Fine. Sounds like a, a kind of a voice of the voiceless type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully doing it correctly. I'm always room for improvement for sure. Oh, right. Yeah. That's a good um, lead into uh, one of our next questions. Um, it was just, um, how do you with like fresh start and like different like the pantries and everything that you're doing um with different approaches how do you stay informed of like how needs are changing for the population and what do you find to be like some of the most common needs and barriers it's kind of a big question but overall yeah, you know <laughs> uh, so i try to stay informed by i'm always doing searches on what other towns are doing with for the homeless population um, and I, I, I like to use the words people experiencing homelessness because all of us can experience it. Um, but I'm also a member of the Lincoln Homeless Coalition uh, and they meet once a month and they talk about all the different resources that the city of Lincoln and Lancaster County has. So that's always kind of like a, a finger on what different associations and groups are doing like Matt Talbot, Fresh Start, 
there's a million of them and they all this kind of a coalition of them and they all talk about what they're good at what they're bad at what they need improvement at how they can collaborate uh what the needs are because if uh, for example with the pantries i get uh unmc I, I tweet to them once in a while and say do you have any extra toothbrushes and toothpaste they give me an entire truckload that makes my truck smell like crest for two weeks but then <laughs> uh, I can then reach out and say, hey, I got a bunch of these items, come and get them. And folks that need it can come and get it. So it's a matter, it's, a, it's often it's about the networking, the resources are there. It's just get, connect, connecting the, the dots is, the, is the, the challenge. I hope that answered the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sounds, yeah, it sounds like you're, you're working really hard to build that community network to keep that going. It's amazing. Uh, and what are some of the policies and approaches that have been the most helpful and what hasn't? Has there anything been to kind of hold, the back, hold you back? I didn't hear the question. I'm sorry. What'd you oh. say again? I was, I was wondering uh, what are some policies and approaches that have been the most helpful for you all as far as getting everything that you needed, uh, getting everything the people experiencing houseness, houselessness might be needing, or if there's anything that's been kind of preventing or not being, a, they're not as helpful as, as getting everything out that, that's needed. Well, that every single association or group is going to have a different answer to that question. Um, as far as Fresh Start goes, we, we've been very lucky. We have a ton of awesome volunteers. Um, personally, as far as just not even Fresh Start or Pantry perspective things that are not helpful in my opinion and i keep i want to preface that it's my opinion because some people might disagree with me is uh right now in downtown lincoln you walk around downtown and there are bars in the middle of benches and uh that's considered hostile architecture it's we've spent money extra money to tell people experiencing homelessness you're not welcome here and to me that is that's going above and beyond cruelty it's just we have enough money to put this nice bench here. We have extra money to put this bar here that says we don't want you here. And to me, that's that's not helpful. Um, but that's that's one of my little soapboxes that I'm <laughs> I'm wound up about. Um, I, I I agree with you on that personally. I, I do agree with you on that. That is not helpful. And I remember was it last summer they cleared out the tra the bike trails, and I thought that uh, was really messed up too. Yeah, over by um, the Salt Dog Stadium, yeah. Yes. That was, uh, yes. according to the Homeless Coalition, the meeting I sat in there, they, they were warned in advance. Um, I just don't, even if it was done 100% correctly, it, they could have um, had better PR on it. Um, oh, yeah. I, you know what I mean? It was just, the imagery was horrible. Um, but, you know, maybe something like that gets people riled up to say, gosh darn it, I want to help. Um, my, my friend lives just a few blocks from here. Last year, we got together and put a bunch of backpacks together and toothbrush, toothpaste, nail clippers, lip balm, things like lip balm you wouldn't think you need until you're outside 24-7. And then all of a sudden, lip balm is pretty darn important. Um, but anyway, the, we put these kinds of things together and we gave them out to Matt Talbot and they were able to distribute them to folks who needed it. Because some folks don't need those items that are experiencing homelessness. They may have, uh, they may be going from couch to couch with a group of friends, which by definition is homeless, but they at least have a shower, a toothbrush, those kinds of things. Whereas others that are experiencing homelessness have nothing. You know, if you have no family in town and you maybe have medical issues on top of that there's it, it just blows my mind that i uh, i don't understand why i'm so lucky that if my truck breaks down today i get it towed and get it fixed in 48 hours and some people are not able to do anything even close to that it's definitely just a lot of chance i think i agree with you there yeah um, it's yeah. It's amazing. Guess, it's shocking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, to be just more specific with, um, I know like with approaches, like everyone has different stuff, but um, is there anything, like I know Fresh Start will have its own way of like different um, 
programs and services and stuff that they provide. Um, I guess, are there any um, that you see just like helping and just being really successful specifically at Fresh Start? Gosh, at Fresh Start, we've got uh, some ladies there that have, um, they, they have experience from in homelessness themselves and, they're, and now they work there. And that is so cool to say, they saw the problem, they rolled up their sleeves, they fixed their problem. They're now sustaining, you know, a, a healthy life and being successful and healthy, and then able to turn around and professionally help others. I mean, that's that's walking the walk and talking the talk. And I think that's super cool. It's 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 a very leadership uh, role model kind of thing. Like I've been there. I know where you are, and I'm here to help. And that that's such a cool asset for an organization like Fresh Start to have. I think um, it's not just someone that has. And now I don't want to sound offensive here. It's not someone that sat in a bunch of classes and knows a bunch of stuff. It's someone that has fallen face first in the, in the mud and wiped themselves clean and gotten, you know what I mean? I don't want to sound yeah. offensive. Yeah, no, 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 no you're fine. I totally agree. You're fine. <laughs> I, I actually like that model. Um, the Mental Health Association of Nebraska uses, uses a similar model at Kia House in Hanu home with their transitional home in Hanu would be coming out of prison. Every single person that's staffed in Hanu home has been has served time in prison itself. So it's a, like an intentional peer support kind of system. And that's what it sounds like for starters. And to me, I think that's probably one of the best ways to set up a program like that because you've got somebody there that's had that experience that knows what to do, that knows what, you know, what steps they need to take. So I think that, yeah, that, that is a, a very good model to have for an organization. And what's taught me that the hard way is some of sometimes and they'll talk about how someone is dealing with drug issues and addiction. And I'm like, oh, really? I didn't even know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not in, I mean, I can tell you stuff about Thomas the Train. <laughs> That's my strength and experience there. But uh, as far as drugs and addiction, I don't know these things. But if they've lived on the street and they know that stuff, they know the lingo. They know the, um, the habits, the things to look for and things to avoid as well. So uh, I think, like you said, that's just such a cool asset to to have in your in your plethora of weapons to to fight, uh, you know, addiction and homelessness. Right, definitely. Um, so our next question here, I figured it's like you know, with the times that we're living in, you have to ask about COVID a little bit. Um, so I was just wondering how you've seen COVID affect the population in houselessness. Um, in terms of like levels of need or types of needs changing, any of that kind of stuff. Lincoln for years had a, a project called Homeless Connect where they would get in the Pinnacle Bank arena and have all these different groups help people experiencing homelessness. It's been canceled two years in a row. And that impact is, it's a measure, I can't measure it. It's not, there's not a chart that measures how much that hurt by canceling that because uh, we, I, I don't know the numbers, but hundreds of people showed up and they had everything from pet care, if you're homeless or, or really close to homelessness, taking care of your pet, your best friend. That's, you know, they clip nails, they do the dog's teeth. They had bicycle care. They had veterans affairs were there. They had uh, judges and lawyers there and they would help you. If you've got fines against you, we're going to get them waived. Come in and just do this. I mean, it was a really cool event. It's been canceled two years in a row. And I'm thinking, think of the, the negative ripple effect that has caused thanks to COVID. Um, it fills a lot of people's buckets, including mine, to go to those events and help. So the mental impact it's had on others, including me, that COVID has caused. And now with Fresh Start for quite a while, we, um, since we have, it's dorm style living, it's two women per room, uh, for a while we had it so there was only 12 women there at a time because we wanted one woman per room because of the concerns of COVID. Um, I believe now they're up to 20, but we're maxed out at 24. Um, so we're getting back to normal, but I don't know. It looks like we're, this COVID thing isn't over yet. They said on the last Tuesday, we're back in the high, high orange. So has me nervous. <laughs> Yeah, fingers crossed and all that. <laughs> yep. 
for sure. I so, could give a thousand cash right now to give my four year old a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. I think they're they're working on that. Uh, I think that's what they're doing next. So that, that should be coming down the pipeline soon. Um, yeah, my sister has a like eight month old, so she I I get the the whole kid thing is just very <laughs> stressful. But yeah. Oh yeah. So <clears throat> in your time working, what uh, what are some more, some of the more inaccurate stigmas that you've seen or heard, and how do you think those stigmas kind of hold us back from helping those who are experiencing homelessness or houselessness? This is the part that really shocks me is the stigma of homelessness. The only difference between someone that's homeless and not homeless is a freaking house. I mean, they got aunts and uncles and cousins and brothers and sisters and fingernails and eyeballs, just like everyone else. I don't understand why, oh, you're homeless. You must be, you know, and I, I fought this fight on even Facebook. They'll say they're, they're called vagrants or lazy bums or, and it's like, sure, whatever. Um, <laughs> It just blows my mind that these stereotypes, and they stick. The stereotypes stick. I don't, I don't get it. Um, I mean, if you really believe stereotypes, I'm a German with a shaved head. <laughs> I'm just saying. And I know where you're going with that one. I'm not that uh, So it's like stereotypes are such a joke. They're usually 100% wrong. Uh, it just blows my mind. Um, at my... I, ha I know some people that I went to, there's a place called Lulu's on N Street. It's a sandwich shop. And I went down there and I told, told a friend, hey, I'm going to go down and get me a soda. It was a hot day last summer. Just walk down the street and get a soda. And the guy says, watch out, there's a bunch of homeless people there. And I was like, why do homeless people scare you? Like, <laughs> I don't understand that knee-jerk reaction of being fearful. Um, to me, that that's that's the hurting part because, you know, it's funny. We're all I'll do anything for my country. I love America, blah blah blah. But I don't want to help someone that's on the down low right now. You know, that's that's struggling. I just don't get that. I, I don't have. I just I don't understand. I'm baffled by it. See, I've never I've never gotten it myself either. And it's it's funny that you mentioned the people that that say they say that for the country. And they won't help the homeless. They're usually the first ones that'll scream, "Oh, we got to help our homeless veterans before we help these other people." Yeah, but then they don't do anything. <laughs> yeah, so. talk is cheap. talk is cheap. Um, yeah, it it blows my mind that you know. And then they'll go and get sit in their Lexus and drive home. You know, I don't know like, <laughs> two two car payments to buy that person a house. You know, um, right house but certainly a month, month or two's rent i guess but yeah i know that um i don't know there's a podcast called best of the left and they had a um a show on i'm going to say two or three weeks ago about homelessness and and housing first and um even john oliver they used a bunch of john oliver he just recently had a show on about housing first and i love how everything in america is a controversy i mean everything i mean you could say you could find a controversy about ketchup and someone would want to start a protest but it just blows my mind that people would argue against putting people in houses well they're lazy they're taking advantage of the system we all have taken advantage of the system i got a free public education that's called taking advantage of the system i have clean water coming to my house yes i do pay taxes but so do the homeless so it's like i just anyway that's you're getting me wound up. <laughs> All right. So on a more positive note with action, uh, do you have any advice for those who would like to get more involved in volunteering or advocacy for the unsheltered in general? Uh, yes, they can call my cell phone. Um, I'm always looking for, for help, whether that's distributing food to the pantries, whether that's um, housing the store at Fresh Start. We get a lot of donations. And uh, we have volunteers come in and, and mark, you know, they'll clean the laundry, they'll clean the donations and then sell uh, the stuff at almost like $2 for a blouse or something like that. Well, all the proceeds go to Fresh Start. Um, we have groups that um, come in and they'll like maybe paint. Uh, I mean, it, it, 
anything like that. The more you involve people, the more they're invested. And the more once you're invested in something, uh, it's so much easier to say, oh, my gosh, I give a darn. I need to go do something about that. Whereas if you read an article about something in somewhere in America, oh, that's too bad. Next page. You know, um, it's different if you're rolling the paint on the wall and then you hear someone there got hurt. So, I mean, it's, you, you, once you're involved, it, it, it's like Velcro almost. <laughs> But it feels so good to try and help people. I mean, it's, it's, I don't know, every time I get upset and think I'm wasting my time, I'm out of gas and I've been driving all over, putting in food in pantries, I go, I, you know, I, I go to my personal life hero, which was um, Mr. Rogers. And he always was said, when things are bad, uh, always look for the helpers. And I'm like, all right, I got to keep going. So I know that's a cheesy way to end that question, but you can't really go wrong on Mr. Rogers. So, yeah, you can never go wrong, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> a controversy, too. You know, I'm sure he, you know, killed a bunch of people somewhere, right? I mean. <laughs> as far as I know, he was a military vet. But that doesn't change the pure content of his career to yeah. me. So. <laughs> so to finish off, um, we have just a few, if you're around here in Lincoln listening in, um, we have a few Lincoln opportunities for you listed out here for your convenience. We have Ryan Miller's conduct information. Um, he's always doing just a bunch of different things like you just heard in the interview um, that you might be able to help out with and also working with Fresh Start Pantries, different things you might be able to help with with him. There's his phone number. There's different contacts for a few different organizations here in Lincoln. There's obviously a lot more, but here's a few to start you off. Um, we encourage you to really try to make use of these. All right, and to close this out, I would like to show you a couple examples of what volunteering or doing your part could look like. And that will be with, through, with the uh, help of a TikTok content creator by the name of T. Nathan. He is very passionate. He works a lot with social injustices and uh, helping those who happen to be homeless is just one of those things. And you'll see just how passionate he is about it just watching his videos. So today, October the 10th, is World Homeless Day. And this day is used to draw awareness to those who happen to be homeless, not only in the United States, but across the globe. So you know I'm busy today, because if you follow me, you know that helping those who happen to be homeless is one of my passions. And I'm not gonna show as much video today, because I'm gonna be real busy. But before we get started, let me show you what we're gonna be doing today. So normally, Jordan will be going with me, but she is sick today. So we will be passing out hydrogen peroxide, some band-aids, and we have some socks. And we're not gonna do all of them, but we're gonna pass out a few of the knitted hats that Raven made for us. And I would like to thank the people who have taken the opportunity to go to the wish list on Amazon and send things like socks. We have some um, feminine hygiene products that Jordan picked out for us. And things I'm not even sure what they are, but Jordan said we needed them, so we have. And because it's a special day, um, I didn't cook, yeah, sorry. But there is a meal coming this week later, but we're going to give them oven-baked goodness from Domino's. And it's going to be, this one is chicken alfredo, but we got a lot of different ones already loaded up. So first, I got to take Bella for a walk, and then I have to finish loading up the vehicle with the rest of these things. And while today is used to bring awareness to homelessness in the world, this is not something I just do once a year. So let's go do it. All right, first stop, first stop. All right, yes, everything. All right, one for you. Top one for you. There you go. Uh, how you doing? How you doing? All right, yeah, top one for you. Let me get you some drinks and some ice. Uh, that one, $524.25, let's get it. Okay, while somebody gets the sandwiches ready, let's get the drinks. All right, let's get it. Let me get some Pepsis, Mountain Dew, and of course, do the water. It's just water. <laughs> it's just... All right, time to pick up the sandwiches. Let's get it. Yeah, somebody got to pay for this. Let's get it. All right, this is Rolo. Help me get these out to the car. Let's get it. <laughs> All right, so we're loaded up, and it's time to go serve. 
So that's what I'm out doing today is getting tents for the camp. And we're about to get all these tents that they have in stock. All right, we're here with some help. And how many, you know how many tents you have of these you have in stock? I see it's 10 out here. I believe there's 10 out here and at least five more in the back. Okay. So we bought 15 of these and 10 of these. So let's go. They only have seven. All right, one more. The head eight. One in the back. All right, let's get it. All right, just eight of them. Just eight of them. Just eight? Yes, just eight. All right. Eight, six, nine, twenty-two. Eight, six, nine, twenty-two. All right, y'all got it. So, if you'd like to help, my beacon link is in the bio. Peace. Okay, you know what time it is. It's time to get these meals for those who happen to be homeless on and popping. Let's check it out. All right, chicken, chicken, done, done. Corn, yes, buttery corn. Mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes. So me and Jordan are about to do the thing. Now we gotta stop and get drinks, ice, and whatever else we come up with. All right, yes, let's get some sun kiss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get some seven up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, root beer, root. It's just water, yes, water. Hey, recording in progress. And due to the fact that it's hot as hell out here, don't forget the ice. All right, let's see how many tents I can afford. Let's get it. All right, the tents, they have, uh, uh, okay, six, uh, seven. They only have seven. All right, one more. They had eight, one in the back. All right, let's get it. All right, just eight of them, just eight of them. Just eight? Yes, just eight. All right. 86922. All right, y'all got it. All right, let's get Miss Rose. All right. Trays, individual trays. Get out, make an effort. It's hot out here. Ha, ah, next stop. Let's get it. All right, yeah, see people, we need to do better, all right? All right, off in the dusty trail. Go get some help with these tents. You believe that this is actually behind a plant, right? Yeah. And here we are, next area. Yeah, I didn't forget the dog food. All right, need both my hands for a moment. You try lugging around tents into the woods. All right, we'll get them later let's get these over here first all right here you all go here you go take those let me get some to drink uh, y'all have a good one all right next one can i get somebody come over give me a hand come on give me a hand yeah what's up what's up oh uh, let's get some food out of here now all right there you go there you go all right make everybody tell everybody get something hey, to eat all right all right i get the back of your shirt how's that yeah all right y'all have a good one right y'all have a good one all right on to the next site yeah, people, we have to do better than this. We have to do better. All right, last stop. All right, let's go. <laughs> Keith, hey. I think Keith and Mary are sick. I gotta go get a mask and take the food the rest of the way in. Hold on. All right, and here comes Matt and Melinda. Hey, hey everybody. Yeah, hey, yeah. All right, thank you. Let's get the rest of this stuff down there. So Matt was telling me we gotta move again, right, Matt? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Let's find another place. It's fighting on the corridor, drama. Right. It, 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 Come get, we got another tent for you. So let's get these tents. All right, last tent. And make sure we get them all set up and I'm gonna come back and take a picture of the new camp. Yeah, look at that, look at that. Yeah, yeah. A puppy so meal. Get some more dog food for this beautiful little girl. Yeah. All right, we out of here, y'all. Peace, peace. everyone thank you for tuning in um we'd like to give just a big thanks to our guests michael ryan miller and to t nathan for letting us use his content yeah, absolutely and we encourage you to go out there and volunteer do your part and as t nathan would say let's get it